So this week we will talk about another type of the spatial data. So it's called LIDAR. Um, the full name is called Light Detection and Ranging. Uh, so it, LIDAR has been widely used nowadays. Um, uh, so for example, the, the auto vehicles are using LIDAR sensors on top of, the, so they put those uh, LIDAR sensors on top of those cars. So the car will know the object that uh, around uh, itself so that it can drive safely. Uh, so this week we will um, talk about this type of LiDAR and data and also we will have a lab that view the LiDAR data, so the 3D object that created from the LiDAR data. Uh, in the past, normally we will have a lab that we, because we have some LiDAR sensors, 3D sensors, um, so we can, do, we can do the scan of the LiDAR inside of our building. So this semester, unfortunately, uh, we cannot do that, so we will skip that part. So the, the lecture and lab of this week will be a little bit shorter. Okay, uh, so before I continue, I just want to um, uh, just introduce some concepts about data and also information. So I think those are also list, uh, listed on our textbook. So data are just simply about the factors and measures of the something of our interest. So those are like um, the census population that uh, we are going to view in the next week. Information are kind of the knowledge and insight that acquired uh, through the analysis of the data. So we, the reason that we want to collect data is because we want to um, gain the insight from the data. So those are the knowledge and the, the information. And uh, in GRS, so we particularly are interested in the spatial data, so the geographic aspect of the phenomenon. And the GRS is an excellent tool that can integrate spatial data with non-spatial data or with attribute. Um, and also, uh, primary data refer to the data that collected directly. So that, for example, the uh, in the last week, so if you use the your cell phone to collect the GPS data, so those will be called the primary data. And in this week, if we, we had a if we if we had a, a a LiDAR lab that we collect data, LiDAR points, so those will be considered a primary data. The second data means that the data collected by someone else. So for example, in last week, so if you use the demo GPS data, so those will be a secondary data. And also this week, so we are going to use a demo, a 3D point, demo 3D model that from the LiDAR data. So those are the data that are collected by someone else, so those will be the secondary data. Uh, and also mental data, so we all see the mental data in the previous labs. So those are kind of information about the data. So the mental data is very important. So uh, you can see that in the previous labs that the data that I shared, I didn't include the mental data. So you will have no idea that what those data are talking about. Uh, however, if you download it from S3, from the living editors, uh, you will see that they provide very detailed mental data so that when you share the data with someone else, uh, it's very great. It's great that you know where the data comes from and also what they're talking about. Okay, and also last week, we also talked about the, uh, the satellite in. Sorry, the week before last week, we talked about satellite images and also air photos. We know that there are different types of the sensors that they capture the reflected energy from the uh, from the sound. So the sound sends out the light to the object. An object reflects energy part of the energy to our sensor. Okay, so our sensor captures those uh, reflected energies and convert that way into different products like uh, satellite images and also aerial photos. So those sensors are considered passive sensors. So that means that the sensor just capture the reflected light or reflect energy from, from the sun. So those are called passive sensors. Uh, we also have another type of the active sensors. So for example, LiDAR is such type of the active sensor. 
Okay, uh, so we can have the passive sensor or we can have the LiDAR sensor. So uh, LiDAR sensor is called active sensor because LiDAR sensor, they send out energy to our object and object will reflect energy to our sensor. Okay, so that is called active sensor. And the LiDAR is one type of those active sensor and uh, it can be, it has been widely used like to detect the elevation of the objects and also detect buildings in the urban area and for other purposes like our auto vehicles. Um, and also right now so our um, airplanes or drones, they can carry multiple sensors. So those sensors can be a uh, passive sensor like to taking air photos or multi-spectral images. All can be the light, LiDAR sensor, active sensor, like LiDAR, okay, so that they can they can get the elevation of the object. Okay, uh, so let's say that the components of the LiDAR. So uh, it has those three components on the LiDAR sensor. So it has the laser transmitter. Okay, so the laser will be sent out from the transmitter. And depending on the power and also wavelength requirements, so the laser, normally the, the laser is, is not in the wave, <laughs> visible band. So normally it is in the near infrared band. Okay, because that will be safer for human beings. Okay, so near infrared band. However, depending on different uh, requirements, so the, the wavelength can be different. Okay. Uh, so we have the laser transmitter. We also have the optical receiver. So remember LiDAR sensor is an active sensor. So it will send out the, the pulse to our object. Okay, so this is a sensor that by using the, the transmitter. And it will also pick up the, the reflected signals by uh, using the receiver. So receiver will pick up and record the laser pulse reflected from the target or from the object. Uh, we also have a detector. So detector will convert um, those um, uh, photons or those reflective energies into the digital format. Okay, so that we can process those uh, reflected signals by using computer. So those will be three, of, uh, three parts. So transmitter, receiver, and also detector. Uh, so we have the scanning sensor, so that is can be installed on the airplanes, so that all the drones or the satellite, in, even the satellite, so that they can fly over the start area and they can get the uh, the object, the information of the object, most in, most likely, so the the height of the object. We can also have the ground-based sensor so that you can just put the sensor on the ground and also it will rotate the sensor. Okay, and so we can see the uh, the 3D view of our target. Okay, so uh, in the previous lab, so in the previous, in the past semesters, so we are using a ground-based sensor. Okay, uh, so this is a short video that talking about the top five use of the LiDAR. So I think it's, it's pretty cool. So let's watch this one together. LiDAR, light detection and ranging. Though LiDAR is used in a number of applications, we have chosen the top five areas where LiDAR plays an important role. Autonomous vehicles. If you've seen a self-driving car before, you've probably seen a LiDAR sensor. LiDAR works as an eye of autonomous vehicles. Imagine if your human eyes allowed you to see in all directions all of the time. Imagine if, instead of guessing, you could always know the precise distance of objects in relation to you. LiDAR enables a self-driving car to view the surroundings with a few special superpowers. Agriculture. LiDAR can be used to create 3D elevation maps of a particular land, which can be converted to create slope and sunlight exposure area map. This information can be used to identify the areas which require more water or fertilizer and will help farmers to save on their cost of labor, time and money. 
River Survey. Water penetration green light of the LiDAR is used to measure underwater and helps create 3D model of the terrain. Underwater information of a river can help understand the depth, width and flow of the water. It helps in monitoring the flood plains. Modeling of the pollution. LiDAR wavelengths are shorter, which operate in ultraviolet, visible region or near infrared. This helps to image the particulate matter which are in the same size or larger than the wavelength. So LiDAR can detect pollutant particles of carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide and methane. This information helps researchers to create pollutant density map of the area which can be used for better planning of the city. For archaeology and building construction, LiDAR plays an important part for the archaeologist to understand the surface. LiDAR can detect microtopography that is hidden by vegetation, which helps archaeologists to understand the surface. Ground-based LiDAR technology can be used to capture the building's structure. This digital information can be used for 3D mapping on the ground, which can be used to create models of the structure. It is very useful for maintaining a record of the structure. Okay, uh, so I think it's a pretty nice and cool um, video. So if you're interested, so I provide your IOP here.